Hi folks, it's been a long time since I've done a video, a uh, lot's changed in my life. So anyhow, I've recently moved house, I've put an alarm in, it's the Yale Smart Home Sync Alarm. Now it comes with these, which, let's have a look, are we going to play ball? No, it's a bit too close. But basically, on the bottom there it says Yale Home Living AC PIR. So this is the standard PIR sensor. Now, I have pets, two cats. So today I've bought, this is the pet PIR. Going back to the standard one. Now the other day I was in the back of this thinking, well, what what can they have done to make it a pet PIR? And I thought of obvious things like, well, they could change the sensitivity, and we'll come to that shortly. Or they could screen off, perhaps, some of the PIR sensor. And I've seen videos where people have said, well, if you turn the sensors upside down, it makes them less sensitive. And a few other things. The one thing I don't like about these is how you fix them to the wall. So if I just take my screwdriver to it, and this, is, this isn't this is the pet one, is it? No, I've had this one in pieces already, so there's simply one screw. Back, that's the tamper, the blue light you saw there was because the tamper detection, which is here, um, has been triggered, obviously. So this is what you have, circuit board. Now what we'll do is you can take the circuit board out just by unclipping these clips. Okay. And there we go. So I'll try and I don't know whether this will work. I really ought to put the macro lens back on. Okay, give me a moment. I'm just going to screw in the macro lens so everything is going to go very out of focus but just perhaps there we go you might be able to see a little bit more clearly what we've got here now I'm not really gonna attempt to do a big clive on this and disassemble the circuitry but there's the microprocessor that looks very much like the radio unit to me there's obviously the PIR detector possibly I don't know it might separate the power or something I really don't know and I don't I can't be arsed looking what I want to know is what is the difference between this and the pet one now one thing I will show you is on here there are that looks decidedly like a programming port to me but there are some jumpers and if I can get this to Let's have a look. Okay, I'll turn it around. Sorry, this is. Now let's see if we can. Okay. There we go. And probably the most interesting one is JP3. Now JP3 at the moment is, and I haven't changed this, this is how, as it's come out of the box, it says if we can just try and find those sensors, well, there they are. Sorry, jumpers I meant to say. But there they are. There are the jumpers. Now jumper 1 is physically not there, so that leaves you jumpers 2 and 3. So jumper 1 is obviously some sort of test mode and it's set to open jumper 2 supervision mode not really sure what that is and jumper 3 sensitivity so I'll just remove the macro lens again I'll just zoom right back out okay so we've just got three AAA batteries never heard of them but there we go, that's the learn switch there. That's the, as I said, that's the uh, the tamper switches. 
across there. So what we'll do now, we'll just put this to one side and we'll have a look and we'll see if there's anything going on here. Now I can't see any of that lens blocked up. I'm not going to open it up for the minute because I don't see as there's any point but there's nothing in there isn't blocked in any way there's no it looks in fact if I take my lovely little handmade torch okay let's have a so yeah okay there we go that's a nice little simple way of sort of testing it isn't it let's turn the brightness down So there we go. Let's go up a notch. Yeah, so there's, there's nothing shielding that off. Okay, so I'm going to just have a quick. Okay, right. So that's the that's the standard one. So I'll put that to one side. Okay, and here we have the pet one now this is brand new out of the box as you can see it's still got the uh, battery flap i have actually wondered what the slot was for right okie diddly let's see if there's any obvious differences in the first instance as i say this hasn't been powered up yet so we'll start we'll start with the back Okay, right, now let's zoom in, and again I'm just going to put the macro lens back in, there we go, so, just, there we go, that's what I want you to see, okay. So that's the standard one. This, this is the pet one. Now I haven't, I must admit, I haven't checked, sorry it's just, it's a little bit, there we go. I haven't checked myself, but they look pretty similar to me. Now. Okay, so this is the pet one. And again, exactly the same. So we'll go to the jumpers, there's the programming port, and again, both the jumpers are identical. Tamper. So let me take the circuit board out. haven't looked at what that chip is that looks like some sort of power regulation circuitry there and that's what I'm interested in that that's the radio circuitry I'm fairly sure of that but that I what I want to know is what that has written on it compared to the other so please just bear with me. 
So I'm going to put that's the pet one. So we'll keep all that together. That's the standard one. So we'll keep all that together. And I'm just going to sorry, let's just take this off. So oops, wrong way. Jump back out. Okay, so normal pet. And I'm just going to com compare the numbers on the back of that IC. So FM86889, FM86889. Uh, I think that says FRP or TRP. And it looks like X155LP2. Oh, it could be yeah, Y15L155LP2. So that's identical. I'll just double check. F. It's IRP, sorry. It's it's quite difficult to make out. It's a little bit uh, smudged on this one. But when you see a comparison that's clear, it's it's very, very simple. Okay. Again, in with the macro lens. So this is the standard, let's just see, I must admit this macro lens is one of the best things I ever bought for my camcorder. Okay so that's the standard, and this is the PET. Is there anything different? That's again. Let's just compare. Oh well, so sorry, just take the lens out, sorry. And all the way, there we go. So pet, non-pet. See what this I'm just gonna see what this little this little chip is here. See if I can read it. An MCP six zero four four. MCP six zero four four. So I think we can genuinely conclude that there is nothing electronically different about them which leaves one thing and the only thing that leaves well it leaves two things either it leaves the lens in the PIR unit or Yale are spinning as a yarn and we are buying exactly the same thing um, which is a bit of a con but I would have expected there to be some difference so okay so we're confident there's nothing that at least we can see with the electronics let's try the PIR sensor is there something unique about the PIR sensor well I can ah uh, now I wonder Okay, I don't know whether you can see this on camera, but up here there are some, well I, I can only call them, it, it's almost like there's a grid. Let me see if I can, can you see, can you see there the sort of vertical, but they only go halfway up, they aren't. I will, no, they aren't on where my finger is. They're not there, but they are up here. Now, let me check. So that's the pet lens. Let me check on the non. This is the standard lens and see whether I can. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, I found the difference. 
Okay diddly. There is a different pattern and it's very difficult to see again. Let me just let me brighten it, sorry, dim the torch. Let's see whether we can possibly get you to to see any of this at all. But there is a let's try the macro. There is a distinct difference in the pattern. Which leads me to think in all honesty, there we go. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, can you see that pattern? Now that is, it's slightly different at, at the top end of that. I'm sorry about this. I'm sure you can see there. If I go down there, it's different. There we go. And that's that is a different pattern. Now, I reckon that if you were to take the lens out, it's just sorry, to take the lens out of here, I reckon that you could simply put a piece of white insulation tape across the bottom of it and turn your standard lens into a pet lens and I might even give that a go but there we go that's that's the difference it's the pattern on the PIR um, I'll do a follow-up video when I actually I'll try that in fact while I'm here okay bugger it let's just let's have a look ah that screwdriver is completely the wrong size let me revert to my old faithful ladies and gentlemen I can't recommend you buy a decent Swiss army knife enough that's the champ it's brilliant <laughs> that's not an advert by the way I just find them an incredibly useful piece of hardware to carry around with me in my everyday life. I cannot tell you what I've been able to do in my life because I've had a Swiss army knife on me. Okay, that's... Uh Okay, out you come, and there we go. So just keeping that like that. Okay, and as you can see, the lens just pops out. So I just want so I just want to make sure I don't want to <laughs> get this the wrong way around. there so I would imagine some white or possibly even black tape across the bottom half or top half I've have to do a bit of experimenting would probably turn a standard PIR detector into a pet PIR detector um, so yeah I'm going to put this back together and when I manage to get a little bit more done on my house and I get these in a position where I can put them somewhere permanently I'll do some follow-up tests thanks for watching I hope you find this useful